Television did not begin in New York or Los Angeles. It popped up in an Idaho potato field. The vision of a 14-year-old farm boy with a funny name. Philo T. Farmsworth. Excellent. Kids in Rigby, Idaho told me about him. He invented the picture tube on the first TV. Philo was plowing a field on the family farm, daydreaming about sending pictures to the sky, when he noticed the sun glinting off a line of potatoes. And in a single blazing moment of inspiration, it occurred to him that a picture could be broken into lines too, beamed into the sky, then put back together again on a television set. The teenager scribbled down his idea, took it to school. And the teacher looked at it and said, it just might work. That's all he needed. By his 21st birthday, with no formal training, Philo T. Farnsworth had successfully built a TV set and sent a picture to it through the air. Uh, the first human uh, image was my mother. She, I think she was the first, absolutely first woman on, on TV. Philo's son, Ski, a New York City musician. There, we're getting some kind of funny glaze on the image, and they couldn't figure out what it was coming from. The cameraman was smoking. That smoke was one of the first moving images on TV. You'd think such stories would have made Philo famous, but when TV was introduced at the 1939 World's Fair, he was walking back past uh, Macy's and he saw these TV sets broadcasting the World's Fair with someone else announcing television, David Sarnoff. The head of NBC back then. And now we add radio sight to sound. Sarnoff bought Philo's ideas but said nothing about his discoveries. How did that affect your dad? It affected him a lot. He had a physical collapse. Philo slipped into history shadows until shortly before his death. Picking up some dust. Okay, engine stop. In 1969, he watched man's walk on the moon with the electronic eyes he had invented for all of us. The pictures were sent back by miniature versions of Philo's cameras. What does it say about us as a people? that something that has changed the lives of so many was thought up by a kid out in the field. Well, it's kind of a clue as to what kind of creative power we have buried out in the, the 3,000 miles of country. For someone willing to move down roads, the world has ruled out. In Rigby, they are celebrating Philo's 100th birthday this year with an invention convention. Here is your patent for your invention. One nine-year-old decided her partially blind teacher needed braille socks. Another rigged a doorbell ringer to help people with handicaps. Then there was a blinking pacifier. Why did you invent it? So that the pacifier won't get lost in the dark. And something called the snotty sleeve saver. You just hook it onto your coat. You just wipe it on there. Not every invention worked, of course. What's wrong with this thing? Something's wrong with this. Oh, there we go. Corbin McMurtry tinkered on his for days. I need more tape. He had an idea for a new kind of vacuum cleaner. This is cheaper and it's also funner, so you can drive it around and just have a good time and I'll vacuum all everything up. Could you back it up? Oh, oh look out! Yeah. Corbin is not much younger than Philo was when he thought up TV. Nice to know the kids in Farnsworth hometown still have his rare gift to see what we all see, but think what no one else has thought. For today, Bob Dotson, NBC News, with an American story in Rigby, Idaho.